right, fans, welcome to the Wrestle Getting Podcast. Another fun week of wrestling talk for you guys. I, of course, am your host, Chris Keith Matthews, joined each and every week by your other host, Garrett G Money Mun. And this week's special guest, Seth Lincoln Rollins. Hey, hey, hey. Jesse Jesus couldn't be here, but I figured y'all need another Messiah. So I'm here for the podcast, man. I appreciate uh, G Money inviting me on. Uh, me and him are in a, a Facebook group together called uh, Beautiful People That Hate CM Punk. And uh, uh, I agreed to come up on the show because he took a dump in CM Punk's uh, gym bag at Gold's Gym. <laughs> Damn right. And I'd do it again. Awesome. Seth, can we, can we get that uh, iconic laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. Oh, good times. If you to get a podcast, where else are we going to get set for you following? Oh man, little random stuff that we do on this podcast. Uh, which takes it over to our random fan. The awesome. Woo! buddy so well uh, i'm going first first yep because i'm not getting my song stolen like it got stolen last week uh i figure if you if if your your skin is the way it is and you're pasty white like i am you gotta be pretty fly for a white guy mother <laughs> I knew that's what one of y'all were going to pick so I had to do it I had a reason <laughs> to pick that one so. well well, I don't do it know. It anyway we're both going to have the same thing so. that's fine that's it don't matter uh, awesome so yeah I went with pretty flat for a white guy the reasoning in high school we had uh, a bouncy boxing uh Thing going on one night for like one of the like school dancing or whatever. And I was I signed up for it with another friend of mine. And we got like entrance music and everything. Mine was pretty flat for a white guy. Nice. I uh am not changing my fucking entrance music, but if I was, I'm gonna go with self esteem. Awesome. Cool. Um, so, Seth, what do we got for next week? Well, you know, I came prepared. <laughs> huh? So we'll let you pick this week since you're our, our special guest. All right. Well, we'll go with uh, my special guest. I'm going to go with my, my, favorite, uh, my favorite artist, Madonna. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> for those following along at home, we are not allowed to use like a prayer. Because that was used that was used by the UK wrestling legend Grado. I forgot to mention last week, we definitely couldn't use come out and play. As everyone knows, ECW legend Raven used that song. Awesome. Um, I am not prepared this week for Elite Figure of the Week. So we will skip that one and go right into a replay, which of course is brought to you by W Energy. Check out W.GG. Use the code WrestleGed to save yourself an additional 10%. Seth, Seth, you, Seth, you, you do dabble us in W? I am down with W. It actually is the uh, official energy drink of Seth freaking Rollins. Look at that. Awesome. <laughs> Good stuff, man. All right, let's get into it. Let's talk some wrestling news. Uh, Kenny Omega, Charlotte Flair, both out with injuries. Yeah, Charlotte's is pretty gnarly. I'd seen it when it happened on SmackDown. Yeah, it was pretty gnarly. I saw it uh, too. Uh, Becky text me. I was like, "Hey, did you see this shit?" 
Uh, yeah, I, know, I heard your, uh, I hear your wife doesn't like Charlotte. So, uh, yeah, she was happy about it. Uh, but yeah, she texted me. I was like, Hey, did you see this shit? After uh, Survivor. Nice, nice, nice. Are we, are we on here? It's kind of quiet. Are we still on, on the... Yeah, we're still on. So I thought okay. uh, Charlotte made up after Survivor Series. Uh, no, nah, they didn't make up. Uh, <clears throat> Kenny Omega, um, I forgot what they said was... What his was. I don't, it wasn't like an actual injury. It was something else. Infection. Yeah, probably something weird with that guy. Never did like him. Uh, divert to the lightest. Yeah, sounds made up. Fifty <laughs> percent chance of death. I mean, don't we all have like a fifty percent chance of death anytime we walk up? Yeah. Well, well it depends. I, I know, it depends. If you, it depends. If you're uh if you're like that fat ass Samoa Joe, you know, he might be uh he might have a thirteen and three thirds chance, but you know, who knows? Thirty three and thirty. Oh awesome. Uh let's see, sticking with some AEW slash Ring of Honor news. Tony Khan introduces a new Ring of Honor Women's Television Championship. Thoughts on another belt being added to AEW. Exactly what that place needs, another title. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of surprised that they went with another singles title instead of doing like women's tag titles. I think that would have made more sense than another singles title, but They've been kind of doing a better job of keeping Ring of Honor titles kind of separated from AEW. I guess if they're shopping around TV networks for Ring of Honor, um, it doesn't hurt to have a television championship that's going to get suspended. I don't know. I'm kind of torn between it. No more titles for Ring of Honor. Uh, I mean, we still got that uh, that continental title. Yeah. Uh, Let's see what else we got here. Uh, TNA signs a big deal with Our Town. Thanks uh, in part to uh, Brian Myers. Um, Said on the uh, Major Wrestling Figure podcast this week that he's uh, trying to broker that deal for the last few months and finally got it to happen. Pretty excited for that since they were supposed to get figures from um, Rush Collectibles, which that dude completely dropped the ball on everything. That sucks. Um, yeah, uh, but that's pretty pretty cool. So hopefully that uh, we'll get that Moose figure we were supposed to get from Rush. Let's hope so. But Outer Town does some pretty awesome figures. They've done um, uh, their first wave included like Magnum PA, like other guys uh they did a matt cardona prime virus pack they look amazing they look awesome i saw him open that ball suit uh, love to get a uh, jordan grace all those guys so, speaking Heck of which yeah. mr rollins our world heavyweight champion if you could pick someone from tna to jump to wwe who would you take I would take uh, none of them. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I probably have to take my boy Moose. Nice. He's a great guy, great in the ring, and uh, I like beating up on taller people. And he'd be the perfect target. All right, good stuff there. Oh, uh, what else we got here? Did we talk about SmackDown moving to USA. Um. I think we did at one point. Okay. 
wasn't true. Uh, let's see. WWE's moved Bray Wyatt to a Legends contract, uh, which is, of course, revealed by his um, dad, IRS, on a, uh, a recent podcast like, interview that he did. Um, all proceeds will go to uh, Bray's family. Classy news there, WWE. Very classy. There, and let's see. Last bit of news I got for this before we get into the, uh, the meat and potatoes replay. Uh, it appears AEW is no longer in talks with Mercedes Monet. Yeah, I, uh, I hear uh, Tony Khan is too busy working on his uh, Christmas song album. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a single out now that's it's pretty good. You should take a listen. Yeah, definitely. Tony the Snowman. Tony the Snowman. It's definitely going to become a holiday classic right up there with Arnold Schwarzenegger's Jingle Ball. Yep. Uh, all right. So that's all I got for news this week. Let's hop over to the actual in ring action. Let's talk about some. Uh, Becca Dowd. Collision, yeah, SmackDown from last week. Um, saw the return of AJ Styles. Looks like he's doing the same workout as Orton and Carlito. Yep. Yeah, man, he's cacked. Too bad he's not on Raw. I'd kick his ass. No, oh, maybe you should get some workout tips from him. Man. Maybe. Maybe you should uh start hitting some actual weights instead of CrossFit. Blah, blah, man. I can't say much though. It's all good. Um, so Sal's return. Um, made the save for LA Knight and Orton as they're getting beat down by the bloodline. Uh, after they clear the ring from the bloodline, Styles dropped LA Knight. Hey, yep. Let's see where they go from there on this week's SmackDown. Well, cool? they're doing a Triple threat to who's facing Orton at Royal Rumble in two weeks. Well, that should be a good match. Orton, Styles, and LA Knight. Yep. You know Orton's good that. Yep. That is a definite. Oh, uh, what else I got? SmackDown. I think that's the only that's the only big thing happened last week. SmackDown, um, AEW Collision. Uh, we saw another confrontation between Abaddon and Julia Hart. Uh, this time lights go out. And Sky Blue is in the ring, uh, dressed in all black. Looks like she's aligning herself with Julia Hart. Um, they went to beat down Abaddon, but Thunder Rosa hit the ring to make the save. This week's collision will have a, a tag match between Sky Blue, Julia Hart, against uh, Abaddon and Thunder Rosa. Pretty excited for that. Thunder Rosa's return to the ring finally. And teaming with Abaddon is awesome. Stoked with that. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of Thunder Rosa. Don't tell my wife I said that. I think Thunder Rosa is a wife's ass. Maybe. I think. Oh, what else we got? Uh, let's kick it over to you, Monday Night Raw. Let's talk about Archer, man. Rollins. How do you feel about Archer? Well, uh, I feel like he won a match fair and square to be in Judgment Day. They should honor uh, the stipulations of the match. I, I agree. I agree with that. I think uh, R Truth is a national treasure. It's protected at all costs. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty pretty good match. It was a fun match uh, between the two of them. With the, uh, and, uh, jokingly added stipulation agreed to by Priest. So, oh, yeah, that was awesome. So yeah, um, see if they actually uh, follow through with it next week on Raw. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, 
and your wife and uh Nia Jack getting into it there. Yeah, uh, yeah. stuff on that promo. Yeah, fat ass bitch. Better not hurt her. Oh man, Garrett, what'd you think about that promo? Honestly, uh I fast forward it through it. Oh, uh really? yeah, like I do most things when it comes to wrestling. So I don't I didn't see it. Oh, but geez. I can imagine it was good because, you know, Becky is uh great on the mic. Basically Thank you for- to uh Naya about how um you know Becky's gonna go on to do Becky's already done like great things and it's gonna be remembered as like the greatest to ever do it. Where and then she's like told Naya, she's like, You're gonna be remembered for breaking someone's nose and injury. Yeah, and being a fat ass. <laughs> no, but it was really it was a good promo. Oh, what else do we have? Uh, Katana Chance and Caden Carter. Uh, take the women's tag team titles from Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. And actually a pretty decent women's match. Um, that's, it was a good match. Uh, the finish there, the uh, the after party from Caden and Quintana was pretty damn Caden awesome. Caden and Quintana are, are a good tag team. I love them. The problem is they just don't do anything with those women's tag titles. So, like, them being uh, on them think, means, uh, like, nothing. They might start picking it up here. Um, at least that's what it seems like. It's got uh, Natty and Tegan and uh, Shayna and Zoe Stark are uh, apparently going at it next week. To see who faces K and K. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. But there's not really. They even have anybody like besides Damage Control on SmackDown. They have uh, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. Well, they haven't been on SmackDown. Well, been... Mm, well, you didn't watch SmackDown this week. I did not watch SmackDown this week because I'm doing this this week. Well, I'm watching it right now. <laughs> and they were on the show. Well, they haven't been on there in a while. It's the first time I've been on there. Last I saw them, they were on NXT. Yep. Uh, well, good. I mean, that's... They have a sweet finisher. Uh, let's hop over to Dynamite. A little bit, a couple of these uh, Continental Classic matches. We kick off the show with Swerve and Roosh. I just want to say, uh, bad on Tony Khan having Swerve already in the ring and no one able to dance to his theme song while he's coming to the ring. What a shame. Yeah. What. What a what a jackass! I mean, that guy's probably has the second his. best theme song besides me. I know I got his groove on at the top of the ramp. You just remember the Continental Classic. Everyone's banned from ringside. Whatever. Yep, that's uh, that's the sticks. But it was a great match. No, nah, it was. It was Love good. It. I'd probably possibly go on to say that was probably the match of the night right there. That was hands down probably the best match on Dynamite. Even better than Moxley and Jay White, which I'm surprised to see Jay White got the pin on Moxley. It's just to set up the triple threat. Yep. Just some bullshit. Nobody yep. else. Moxley. Can't give Jay Lethal a win here or there. Yeah. Nope. Jay Lethal got a big fat zero. Uh, he's not uh, Tony Khan's shiny toy. Freaking ridiculous. The match wasn't bad. It was it was all right. Um, definitely Swerve and Rouge was definitely a better match. Uh, MJF and Samoa Joe um, promo from this week was pretty solid. Um, we're actually going to defend the ROH tag titles against whoever is uh, working with the devil. Yep, I saw that. It'd be interesting. Solid, especially the uh, later on in the night where uh, MJF found the mask outside of the Mogul Embassy's locker room. I mean, I, 
face to face with Swerve. Yep. Just that whole thing's like Swerve, skirt, skirt. Yes, we got a guest appearance again. <laughs> God just wants some attention. Yep. He just wants to. Yep. Yep. There you go. Um, that's pretty much all I've got for the instant replay this week. If you guys got anything else to add? Um, I don't think so. Nothing I can think of off the top of my head. Oh, so we'll go from uh, instant replay to the wrestler of the week this week, which is uh, Garrett's pick, Brian. Um, yeah. Fill us in on, uh, on Brian Keith. So, Brian Keith, oh, well, so I don't know if you watched, I can't remember if it was Rampage or Collision last week, but he wrestled uh, Orange Cassidy. Um, and uh, it's a pretty good match. And then uh, I was trying to look up an indie wrestler to promote because I feel like we don't really talk about indie guys. And he was on, like, a few lists that I looked at. So, he apparently trained... Uh, and Booker T's uh, training thing. Okay. Uh, and he's got a pretty cool gimmick. He's like a, he's a cowboy, <laughs> and uh, nah, he's, he's actually pretty cool. And uh, I I was trying to look up some matches, and I found a match between him oh. and Mike Bailey in Texas Pro Wrestling, and it's pretty damn good. I had to say the guys definitely got a lot of talent. So. You should check out the match. It was pretty awesome. That link will be in the episode description so you can check that out. I'll definitely have to watch that. Yeah, it's pretty good. The Underground heard... King. Yep. Uh, switch your house. Yep, yep. All right, that's going to bring us over to you. Tiny Money Squids. Woo! Carl's not here this week. Yeah, I know. So you're probably going to lose because Seth knows a lot of wrestling knowledge. I've heard he's like the super smart dude when it comes to wrestling knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this week I decided to do, uh, I'm going to give you a faction. And you have to tell me the original members of the faction. So not like people who are added afterwards. Original. And I'm going to start preference by saying it might not be like 100% accurate. Because it was kind of hard to make sure they were 100% accurate. But they're going to be as accurate as I can make them. Okay. And I will tell you how many members that there are. So it's not too confusing. Does all that make sense? Okay. All right. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll start it start it off with uh, the shield. <laughs> uh, all right. All right, Chris. We'll start it off with you. So we're gonna the first team. The first faction is the Heart Foundation, but it's specifically the 1997 version. 1997 version. Yep. Yeah. Um, that should be Brett. And it's five people, by the way. It's Brett, Owen, Bulldog, and Bill, and Brian Phil. Yep. You got them all. Easy peasy. Mr. Rollins, you get, uh, you get right to censor. It's, <laughs> it's three people. Uh, I'm going to go with Stevie Richards. Okay. The Good Father. So, he was not technically on the list, but I mean, I could give it to you, but go ahead. And Ivory. There, there's another name on there you're forgetting. Oh, uh, Bull Buchanan. There you go. All right. Chris, 
You get the Un Americans. That's three people. Uh, Landstorm. Yep. Um. Yep. Oh, fuck. I don't know. Grenade free. <laughs> the last one is test. Test. That's right. I forgot he's grenade. All right. Mr. Rollins. Your faction is the cabinet. The cabinet. That one actually. I don't, <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> you don't know the cabinet? No. Oh my god. Well then I guess I give you another one. I'll just give it to Chris. So Chris can get it. But Chris, you go ahead. Go ahead. Give me the cabinet. Um Orlando Jordan and the Bashers. And Jillian Hall. And and, and JBL. Well, it was JBL's cabinet. Well, I, oh, I know, oh. but technically it's JBL's is in it. Too, I, I, remember, I, I remember that now. I remember the cabinet now. All right. Yeah. So, Seth, I'll, I'll give you this one then instead. I'm going to give you the Radicals. Um, it's um, four four people, by the way. Four people. Um, Ray Mysterio. Uh uh-uh. uh. Billy Kidman. No, no, you're thinking of the wrong one. Huh? No, I'm thinking wrong, of the wrong one. Wrong one. Radicals. Yeah, wrong one. <laughs> You're you're naming a uh, uh, faction I got at the end. The filthy animal. <laughs> yeah. I'm naming the filthy animal. <laughs> Fucking uh, the radicals. Yep. Uh, Dean Malenko. Yep. Uh, Eddie Guerrero. Yep. Perry Saturn. Uh huh. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's Chris being an ass. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, I said Perry Saturn. I said Dean Linko. I said A. Guerrero. Am I missing one? You're missing one. You said there's four? Oh, Chris Benoit. There you go. Oh, you're doing a bell. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give this back to Chris. And Chris, you're going to name me La Resistance because I know they're your favorite team. Uh, Rene Dupree, Sylvain Grenier, and Rob Godwin. You <laughs> the dog. And if you're the guy that lives around here, I hope you don't listen to our podcast because you're a dick. And no one gives a shit that you can get fucking law resistance to your fucking thing. That's not a brag. It's sad. Anyways, get back on track. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Love this thing. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Mr. Rollins, I need you to name to me Team Angle. It's four people. Uh, Kurt Angle. Yep. Charlie Hoff and Shelton Benjamin. Mm-hmm. He says four people. Yeah, you gotta remember managers count. Uh, who the fuck was the manager? Um, 
Sam and Dean, uh, uh, the manager is the manager of like fucking every team. Paul Heyman. There you go. I don't remember Heyman, man. I don't remember that either. Yeah, he was. I actually do know because I've I, I recently saw something that was like old school them, and yeah, he was. He was. He was. I don't know if he was over like the whole team, but I know he was the manager of the world's greatest tag team. So, anyways, all right. Uh, Chris, I'm gonna give you the League of Nations. League of Nations. Uh, yep. Rusev, Sheamus, and Perko Del Rio. One more. Alberto Dorito. Uh, Drew McIntyre? Nope. Nope, nope. No, no, no. Pretty close, pretty close. He uh, currently is on commentary. Oh, Wade Barrett. There you go. All right. Mr. Rollins, since you were trying to name him earlier, I need you to name me the filthy animals. Oh, uh, Ray Mysterio. Yep. Billy Kidman. Mm -hmm. Conan. Yep. How many are there? Four? Uh, there's five. How many did they have names so far? Three. Um, who are the other two? Well, one of them you used for one earlier. Uh, and the last Eddie one's Guerrero. A, well, the last one's a female. Eddie Guerrero. Uh huh. Uh, Stacy Keebler, the the other one. Uh, Tori Wilson. There you go. Just going for. All right, Name hot one. <laughs> yeah. All right, and last one is demolition. Really? And there is, I got five people on this list. How the hell do you have five people? You talk like yeah. a guy or indie that weren't even official demolition members. Hey, I got I got five people on here, man. <laughs> if we're going to original faction, it's only two people, right? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I got I pulled up five people, so uh, I don't tell you. He's got name me these five people. I mean, you had Axe and Smash, and they had a crush. They had Mr. Fuji as a manager at one point, and then yeah. they had um. Some big dude who was like called Demolition Bomb or Demolition Wrecking Ball or something. <laughs> like a real big fat guy. Yeah. All right. Well, oh, that's. He was teaming with Smash. That's my list. Well, I want to say Axe and Smash were like by themselves for forever. They probably were. For like yeah, they Rush was like Axe. So, some of the ones that I tried to look up, I had a hard time trying to find like when everybody was in it. So I just went by the one list I saw that was just all of them for that one. So I kind of knew that one wasn't going to be right, but I didn't care. All right. So there's that. It's been quick tonight. We're only like 34 minutes. I'm getting a uh, quick episode. Depending on how yep. long we run and no holds barred. No holds barred. No holds barred. So, Mr. Rollins, uh, what are some uh, things that you like to do outside of wrestling? I like to uh, eat fiery red bushes. <laughs> I like to uh, try on uh, new clothes. You find uh, women's clothes fit you better? They do. They do. <laughs> so 
Uh, what'd you do with those Goomba stoppers? Uh, they're in my closet, man. Man, those things are awesome. Do you ever dress up as like Mario and put those on and just go on turtles? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh. Yeah, me and Becky like to wear each other's clothes. See that. There you go. Oh. All right. Oh, um, I actually have some. Uh oh. This guy, this I'm scared. Related. Uh, there's a signing event in uh up in New York City. It's called the Big Event. Uh huh. They got one coming up here, I think, in a couple months. So they have they've announced guys like um like Mickey James and um, a few other people, but they just announced Stacy Keyboard. Interesting. So here's here's the fucked up thing. She's only doing a limited time signing, so she's not signing for the entire. Place. She's only signing for a certain amount of time. Not staying late, not making sure everybody that's waited in line gets a signature. Um, on top of that, she's charging $130 for a signature, $160 for a photo, and is not offering a combo, not offering combo prices. Wow. So my question, what the fuck is Stacey people done to think that she can charge $30 less for a signature than all well, first of all, I gotta be honest. I don't think I'd pay more than like maybe thirty bucks for a signature. Yeah, maybe like that. That's even a little much for me. And then you're telling me it's a hundred more bucks than that? Yeah, I'm I'm good. I mean, I paid I paid a hundred for Hogan, but that's different. It's fucking Hogan. Hogan, and then I paid. 100 for Birds to Barber BK, which was done way fucking more than the Stacey Keebler has. So, I know. But I'm not paying $130 for Stacey Keebler's fucking signature. I can tell you that. So. Well, if you want mine, that's going to be a million dollars. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't need your support. And it's insane, like the prices that are being charged now. But then you have like people. I think well, um, like the Hardys weren't even that much. Like together, it's, it's insane. Yeah, yeah, no. Insane price signature. Hell, you didn't even pay that much to see Steamboat. Oh. Well, Steamboat was like, what, 60? Maybe a little less than that? Yeah. That wasn't that bad. And then didn't... Who did we see at the other one? Was it Sting? Yeah. yeah. I don't remember him being that much. And Sting was only there fine. Like he wasn't doing anything else at the show, so right. Like we had to. I think he came out there and like cut a promo or something, but that was like it. He didn't do nothing. He just came out. Uh, he didn't come out at all. He just did the signing before the show and he was gone. Yeah, but, I can't uh, remember. Yeah, talking to the uh, the handler that we had for Triangle Terracon for Abaddon and Rachel True. He's uh he's done events with Sting before and he's like yeah Sting he's like it's like that with Sting like they'll only be at a place for a certain amount of time with signings and that the like he won't he won't stay more than like a couple hours. Interesting. In order to pay it to get him there because you know it's Sting. Yep. So that was like one of the the big things coming out from this week. Interesting. Like ridiculous to me. Uh, let's see. Today's the 22nd. Iron Claw opens up theaters today. You guys got plans on seeing that? Yeah. Um, who want, wants to miss uh, MJF in this 45 seconds of fame? 
see it's been getting a lot of good reviews a lot of good feedback from uh a lot of people that aren't wrestling fans um that don't know the story of the von erics um i've seen a lot of reviews coming out from them and they've had nothing but great things to say about it that's good whereas you know us are gonna be like, it's gonna be awesome anyway hey, yep. Related. Except for me, because I don't know shit about the Von Erics. Other than they got the greatest uh, fucking submission hold in all of professional wrestling, but that's about it. Zap, you should you should stop using the curb stop and use the iron claw. Is the iron claw? I should, but my hands are not big enough. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Sure there's there's somebody out there that could get an iron claw. I tell you one thing that'll be pretty hard to take a RKO from an iron claw. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's true. <laughs> oh, awesome! Are right, you guys got anything else for no holds barred? All I was gonna say is uh is uh. Mr. Rollins, what do you think about uh about uh about uh, uh Taylor Swift leaving hickeys on uh Travis Kelsey's uh, uh neck? I mean, do you do you think the rumors are true that she's a vampire and she's sucking the life out of him? Um No, I don't think that, but I mean if you like threes, uh it'd be a pretty fun time. <laughs> Uh, I saw a picture today that uh that he had a hickey on his neck and that was the tag find was like she's sucking the life out of him. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. Oh. Well, that's all we got. That's all I got. You know, if Carl was here we could talk about Tennessee Titans, but uh you know, I know Rollins is an Iowa fan, so probably watches a lot of college football. Yeah, I watch a lot of college football. Uh, Alabama's probably going to win it all. Roll Tide. All right, well, that's going to do it for No Holds Hard. Let's pop forward to the theme of the week, which would have uh, been Carl's pick this week. Or, uh, yeah, but uh, I think it's only fitting that uh, since he couldn't show up like a dumbass and he had to get Seth Rollins to fill in, that we have Burn It Down uh, as a theme of the week. Right. Like your first theme or your new one? My new one. Okay. I think the title for that one. Don't tell me what the title of my song is, okay? Well, get it fucking right. Cool. Cool. You know, uh, do you guys a favor by coming on your podcast, and this is how you treat the, the best guest you've ever had on this <laughs> motherfucker. Oh, you shit. Ugh. <laughs> 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 Knows the name of his song. Does well, he? you know, that piece of <laughs> that's a that's a piece of shit right there. Just for that, I'm shitting in his gym bag again. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I hope he comes to your house, Colin, so he's up for decker and everything. <laughs> well, I tell you a little story about CM Punk. See, CM Punk is the little red Riding Hood, and why he's off in the forest. The big bad wolf was at home eating grandma. <laughs> All right, so that's got a thing for old lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. <man. laughs> oh, All right. Well, I guess that's going to do it for us. So, oh, you know what? It's Christmas. What uh? I'm here real quick. To pull this out. 
Uh, go to Christmas movie. One that you watch every year religiously during Christmas. Uh, I don't watch any Christmas movie religiously every year. Uh, however, uh, I can do a special shout out and say that a tradition that I will have to start watching every year because it is my wife's favorite movie and she watches it every year is she watches Meet Me in St. Louis every year. Oh. Because, you know, they're from that area. That's why. If you ask me, like, Christmas movie, I mean, you know, you can never go wrong with Die Hard. No, nah, definitely not. Because, uh, I watched these guys prove how it's a Christmas movie, and it, it kind of cracked me up, because I was like, I've always <laughs> known this. So, it, the beginning of Die Hard starts off by playing a Christmas song, and it ends with a Christmas song. During Christmas. Yeah, it does. The whole movie takes place in a building that's having a Christmas party. If you gotta make an argument for your movie, it's not a Christmas movie. That's why I there's only so. one answer to this question, and it's uh, it's a wonderful life. That's true. Yeah, mine's uh, Christmas. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Well, I'm honestly surprised they haven't like tried to remake that. Because you can't. Yeah. It wouldn't be any good. I mean, they redid Miracle on And it wasn't any good, so. There you go. I would say they make a sequel like a <laughs> sequel? Where he actually does commit suicide? They made two. The Christmas Story 2, and they made another one. That was like a Christmas Story turn or something like that. Yeah. Are, there, are they doing a sequel to uh, Home Alone? I don't think so. I saw I saw a trailer for it, but I don't know if it was real or not. Well, talking about uh, Kevin's Revenge or something like that? Yeah. It's like, yeah. It had like Kevin, his mom, Buzz was like a police officer. Yeah, no, that was that was something that uh, like one year nine. That was pretty good. Right, well, I think that's gonna do it for us this week. Uh, be sure, make sure you join us next week as we're going to uh, go through the Wrestle Get In Podcast Awards, baby. We're gonna give you our best and worst. 2023. Oh, see if uh, Mr. Rollins makes the cut. I'm very at the top of all y'all's list. Yeah, yeah we'll see. After your parents on here you might have dropped out. Well. <laughs> oh, that's going to do it for us this, this week. Thank you to our guest, Seth freaking Rollins. And on behalf of myself, Chris the Heat Matthews, and Garrett G Money Mun, we'll talk to you guys next week. Later, Marks. <laughs>